Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays. Well, it appears to be Lumberjack Simulator once again. Uh, so I'm here. I am trying to clear out some space in the trees to put in to put in some more of the um, powered the electric science labs because I don't want to have to deal with feeding the uh, burner ones with coal. Uh, I want to move everything over to electric, obviously. And I think the electric ones are probably a bit faster as well. Um, although I'm not not certain about that. So at the moment, clearing out just clearing out some space among the trees for them, and then having the um, having a belt bring the uh, science packs up to them. Um, as, as usual I've run out of belts, so it seems to happen basically whenever I try and do anything. Uh, so let's give that another shot. And watching out for meteor strikes as well, but that one went in the water so that's okay. So we'll build that up here, slap in some science labs as you, uh, in, the, oh, in the obvious way. And yeah, unfortunately there's some cliffs in the way along here, which is a bit of a pain. Um, I'm going to put these extra belts in for so I don't accidentally build in the wrong places. But essentially, this should now, um, yeah, allow everything to allow my research to run happily. But those cliffs, as I said, are they're a bit annoying. I'd rather they weren't there. But still, we can uh, pull all this, all the uh, old research uh, area up and uh, feed feed it back into the into the assembly machine to build into more modern research labs. Okay, and for my next trick, what should we do next? Ah, uh, yes, another thing I realised I, I hadn't done. Is, um, this this mod pack allows you to turn um, coal and wood and basically anything else that can be burnt into um, into a processed fuel that can then be used to power well everything. So that's what I'm doing here. The idea is that it um, the the process of turning it into the um, into the processed fuel that was a rather terrible sentence. Um, make it gets you an extra 10% or so of energy for free. So each of these little orange things takes about four or five pieces of coal to to actually build but then it produces more than that amount of coal's worth of energy when you burn it. So it's, it's sort of another net, um, not a net saving, it means you get through a bit less coal for the amount of, uh, amount of power you want to produce. That does also mean I need to think about um, exactly where I'm, where all my different resources are coming from, uh, because, or how they're being put onto the bus, because this belt on the bus is intended to actually be coal specifically. For things that act, that are, uh, require coal as a component, like like grenades, and I, uh, which are required for the grey science packs, and I'm going to want grenades at some point as well. So I, I'm going to make sure that that is actually coal fed directly from the um, from the coal mine. But elsewhere, we want to make we want to use the um, we want to use the, the fuel cells because they're a bit more efficient. It's not worth going through and picking up all the coal off all of the uh, the feeder belts. I don't think I'm just going to let let it gradually move over as, as the as the fuel gets used up. The only slight downside of it is it means I don't have as many items on the belt, because each one of these is quite quite a bit denser than coal. Each, I think it's something like, as I said, four or five coals to one fuel cell. Uh, so it doesn't fill the belts up quite as nicely, but in a way that's not a problem, because each one will, will last longer. So I think it's just going to sort of sort it out and put it in... Um, and, and, and neaten, it, neaten it up a bit, and just sort of condense the belts down. And once once it catches up properly, then um, it'll it'll work okay. Now that does mean each each individual um, unit of that is more expensive than uh, than one one piece of coal is, which is why I'm going to leave the the belt that feeds the, the uh, turrets um, on uh, using coal because that's again it, it's a much smaller um, amount of resources left on the on sitting on the belts being basically unused if I use coal rather than the uh, rather than the fuels. I would have to use an enormous quantity before it would be cheaper to use uh, coal. Okay, so I'm also going to extend the um, the research labs up here, and I'm doing it with ghosts like this because this way, once I do actually um, research cliff explosives, which hopefully can't be that far off. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, once I do get them, then it'll be a lot easier to just. Uh, then I can just come in there, blow up the cliffs, and use the um, and put put the uh, labs in where I've left spaces for them. Simple, hopefully. I'm putting in a marker here to keep an eye on how many um, how many science packs I have because I'm, I'm concerned that I might be getting through them quite a bit faster than I'm actually producing them. Uh, so with that, I, I put the I put the pylon down where the line of, of um, science packs came to, specifically the red ones came to, and then I'm keeping an eye on it to see whether it gets longer or shorter. And it does seem to be getting shorter as far as I can tell as I run run away from it like this. We'll have a look. I'll go back in a few minutes and take a look at it. Okay, time for another new um, material at this point. So I'm going to need a lot of a lot of uh, burner, fur a lot of furnaces for this, because now it's time to build. Um, now it's time to start working on steel, at least if I can count. Here we go. Let's mark. Let's mark it out properly. So steel requires you to burn 
the, each product twice. So you need to you need to cook the um, the iron ore into iron, then you need to cook the iron again into steel. So here I'm, I'm setting up the, uh, the the power for the um, or the, the fuel rather for the furnaces. There's one of them is the other way up because of the um, the way up inserters are. So I need I need it because inserters always insert onto the the other side of the belt. I need it to have always it happens on the near side for the first one. So what I'm going to do here is run um, iron ore through the middle on the on the, the very middle one of those belts like this. Uh, eventually, <laughs> once it once it's passed all the way through, there we go, like this. Um, and then it'll get passed up into the first set of furnaces to be turned into iron plates, and then into the second set of furnaces to be turned into steel. Should be quite simple. We'll um, we'll see how it goes, and then I can link it up and put it onto the bus as normal. But I'm going to need a lot of inserters for this. Later on, once you get um, electric furnaces, you can just do direct insertion rather than having this belt there. So go insert directly from one furnace into the other. And that's slightly more efficient on space, but because I need to get fuel into the second set of um, furnaces as well, I need to have the belts like this. Now conveniently, it's balanced so that it's, it's sort of one-to-one, -one. so making making steel takes five times as long as making iron does, but it also uses five times as much um, of the raw materials, so you so, so it actually keeps it, keeps it balanced. You, you, you feed five iron plates through and you make one steel, but it takes five times as long, so you can have one, literally have, as it is here, one, one furnace feeding one furnace. And it is kind of horrific how expensive steel is. So you basically would need to have, if you wanted to have a full belt of steel coming out at the other end, you would need to have five belts worth of steel of, of iron ore going in at the beginning of it. So it's, yeah, it's an expensive product. Fortunately, at this stage, I don't think I need very much of it, but I know that's going to change as we get later on. But then by that point, I'll need more of everything. There we go. So notice that the um, the the science packs are getting used up much faster than they're being produced. But then I have got quite a lot of labs working on it now. I'll go in and, and, and look at that in a bit. Here we go. Steel production is, is working nicely. As, as I say, it's, it's quite slow because steel is expensive. But it is, it is being produced, so that's, that's a good start. And the research is ticking through quite nicely as well. So up here, I was having a look at the checking the inputs. And yeah, they all seem to be flowing reasonably well at the moment. I've got a decent amount of all of the ores coming in. Oh no, no, the copper wasn't running fast enough. That was what was going wrong there. Um, because it was all gumming up on the, the left-hand side, well, the right-hand side, as it is, uh, left-hand side if you were actually on the belt. Um, because it was all, all of the um, the iron was being taken from the right-hand side, so not enough of it was, so it wasn't getting through on the other side. The um, the splitter I put in should fix that, and, and in fact it has. It's, it's now feeding through much more uh, cleanly. Now the easiest way to make more science packs is just to make just do a copy and paste of the uh, of the factory I already had set up. So we'll do that. Of course, at this point I don't have bots, so I have to then go in and do this all this manually. But it's not it's not too big a deal because the um, the uh, red red science factories are relatively small. Uh, let's put these in so they actually get power. There we go. And that's that's doubled my uh, red science production now. And now to have a look at this one. Why is this not working fast enough? It looks like there's there's not the um, the belts aren't being produced fast enough. That seems to be the problem. And looking at that inserter there with the for the um, the iron into the gear machine at the bottom, it's struggling because the the insert the yellow inserters are just too slow to pass through all of the iron that's required for all of the all of the gears that are needed. So the limiting factor isn't the um, isn't the machines that are doing the actual construction. It's the inserters that are loading the iron into it. So now you can see the um, the uh, what do you call it? Um, the the uh, motors are going through. Um, a bit more quickly. Still not fast enough though, so I'm going to put in a couple more of these inserters like this, uh, running into a couple, of, uh, an another two machines, and then we'll copy, copy that across. And we've now got, tw again, definitely twice as many, possibly four times as many um, motors being produced at this point. It's, it's hard to judge exactly, because the, the inserters do seem to be running flat out. So it's, it's definitely a lot more, and we're now getting a lot more belts flowing through. And if you, and as we watch down on the um, on the right hand side they're getting further and further down the queue of um, assembly machines so you can tell when you're producing them fast enough because each time a bunch of them come around it gets a bit further along the, um, the, the uh, along the belt so now we've got the penultimate one was taking those in and now the final one's running as well so now everything now it's all working we're producing um, we should be producing green science at about twice as fast as before maybe a little bit more we'll, we'll see how that goes um, and we'll just keep an eye on it 
That's all we can do at this point. Okay. I'm now at that point where you think, right, what should I do next? And fast inserters are very tempting, especially given that I, had, I ran into a problem with the inserters not being fast enough at that point. So maybe I should maybe I should build fast inserters. But I think first I'm going to do the um, the electric poles because they're something they're quite they're very useful to have that bit that bit of extra coverage, and also to have the poles being made on the um, on the bus is kind of handy too. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the wood if I want to switch over to um, electric poles because it was it was it was something to use the making the the little ones at least the little wooden ones was something to use the um, wood for. But still, it's it's a bit of a convoluted um, process making the um, making making them. So we need we need sticks to make uh, little little iron poles, which we need to make big steel poles, and then we need wire as well for both of them. I think it turns out I need sticks for both of them as well, so I decided actually, rather than having it set up in, in, a, in a row like that, let's set them up in a cross shape. And then we can have one of them making the sticks, one of them making the cable, uh, wire rather, and then just have a, a spray of inserters like this, <laughs> just loading them all up as, a, as applicable. Then it's just a case of running the, all, all the belts in as usual. Uh, that looks like a miss to me. There we go. So we can run the iron in here, run the copper in up round it round towards the top like that oh yes we needed st oh yeah, steel of course of course it's steel for those uh whack in a couple of them get some power and the spot of finishing off the belts oh and it looks like the uh, the biters are attacking again. I mean, yeah, they do that all the time, but uh, this time they've actually caused a bit of damage to one of my turrets, which is not acceptable, should we say? So, yeah, let's go and have a look at that. Well, though, yeah. So, yeah, that was a quick check to make sure that the um, the poles were actually being built, and I hadn't just got most of it running. But now we can go down, have a look, uh, find out what's going on with those biters, why they're getting a bit too close, and beef up the defences a little bit. There are quite a lot of them coming through here, which is a bit of a a bit of a pain, but a few more turrets like that will, will do nicely, and uh, just rearrange the belts a little bit so that it's um, so they're all so they can all be fed properly. Simple, nice and easy. And while I'm here, I'm going to put a wall in as well. And maybe I should put the wall in across the um, across the narrow bit, but I'm I'm, I'm not going to because there aren't any. Um, uh, it's too far away from the turrets where I put the turrets, and, and wall is cheap. And I'm going to put in some dragon's teeth here. I, this is something I started doing when I was playing Angel Bobs because you got some rather more dangerous biters in that, uh, which are a bit, a bit worse. I've also discovered the shallow water now as well, which is um, new to me. I think that must be another mod pack thing. So there's something else to worry about because the biters can presumably the biters can cross it as well. But I think I've got enough turrets down there, and the wall will discourage them a little bit. Hopefully the water will slow them down, so if they do go that way, they won't be able to get in. As, get, they won't be attacking as quickly. Somehow I missed replacing that burner assembly machine with a real one, so that's fixed now. Okay, over here, let's let there be light. Um, and now that I've got these nice big shiny poles, I can use them to. Um, I, can, I can start using them around here and uh, say, say, save, save, save another power pole. <laughs> not, to, not it really matters. And I feel like it's always worth picking up those um, asteroids, where, where the meteoroids, where they've come down, because they do have some useful ore in them, so you know, it, it's, it's worth having. And now I'm getting a bit fed up with how long it takes to walk anywhere, so it's time to start building up um, vehicles, I think. And so for that, I'm going, to, if I'm going to need oil at some point quite soon, so that's going to be something to something to think about, something to go off looking for. So there's a bit of a bit of um, exploration time now. We'll go out and have a look, uh, maybe pick up some more meteors on the way, or maybe just ignore them completely. But yeah, we'll, we'll have a look around. Uh, try not to get too near to any of the biters. They're um, Whilst I probably could get rid of the, uh, get through them all with the uh, machine gun, I'd, I'd rather not sort of at this at this point. I think I'd rather just sort of stay safe, and I'm I'm just trying to explore at the moment, just get an idea of what's around, and look for some oil because, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going I'm gonna need oil for plastic. I'm gonna need, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna need oil for all kinds of things at this point. Well, there's some uranium that's worth knowing about for, in about 50 hours probably when I get to that stage of the game. Actually no, this is this is vanilla. It's probably not going to take that long. Um, if I can, if uh, if there's the uh, if you can, if if it's theoretically possible to launch a rocket in about eight hours, which I think is one of the achievements, uh, that's the there is no spoon one I think. Then hopefully even with a a lightly modded game, I should be able to get um, nuclear power up and running in about ten, 
Maybe, maybe? I, I don't know. I'm, I have to admit, I haven't been approaching the game with the intent of uh, running through it as quickly as possible. And I have just... <coughs> excuse me. I have just noticed that there is oil a lot closer than I realise. It's only just down here. <laughs> so I don't... I was thinking I might be going to need to um, produce landfill and have a, a railway line going all the way across that big lake to the south. Fortunately, I found a, a patch up here. So I'm going to build a wall around it. Uh, just just to, to, to mark it off and, and as to remind me where it is at this point. To keep the biters out. Not that's particularly an issue with their un, un, untouched stuff. But it gives. But it's it's a start. And what I'm going to do is is run a railway line up there and have have t two trains going up. One will go up to a um, an oil pickup station and, and I may even put in a refinery up there. We'll 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 see how it goes. Um, I haven't decided yet. And I'm also going to have an unloading station that takes coal and ammunition. So I can, rather than having a long belt going up there carrying all of the ammunition, I'm going to uh, run, I'm going to take it up by train. Of course, what's probably then going to happen is I'm going to start getting um, biter attacks on the, um, on the railway line or the power poles that go up there. Which isn't really supposed to happen, but you know, <laughs> with my luck it probably will. Or maybe, so, and then when that happens you usually end up having to run, um, turrets all the way along the uh, defense or all the way along the railway line anyway right next um there's so it turns out there's a rather large patch of cliff face in the way i'm gonna need to get past that somehow so we're gonna yeah we're we're just gonna go around it it's dirty and horrible but we're gonna do it anyway because i don't feel there's a great deal of choice um but also i've noticed i'm running out of power so that means it's time for some more boilers and some more steam engines over here let's get them put in and i think i'm gonna need some more fuel processors as well the, uh, the coal has backed up and they're just not able to deal with it fast enough. Actually, looking at that, in hindsight, that might be just because the um, inserters aren't fast enough. If I put some faster inserters on there, maybe I wouldn't need quite so many um, of the fuel things. Because you can see, you can see the, uh, the no fuel lights flashing up repeatedly on them because they're running out of input resources. So if, I just, if, I, if I'd just gone in and put in uh, a massive quantity of um, extra inserters, maybe that would have been enough. Oh well, never mind. And as usual, I'm running out of absolutely everything. Uh, but there we go, that's that wrap and wrap and running. And now we've got the um, extra power coming in from the from the extra uh, steam engines. It turns out, looking at this, I was I was curious about the um, the efficiency difference between them, and it seems to be about I think it was 10%, 20%, something like that. So this one takes in 1.8. Um, Oh, I, didn't, I didn't read the numbers quickly enough. I'll put it up. I'll put it up on a cup. <laughs> but it turned out to be about 10% more efficient, I think. I'm just emptying my inventory a bit. That makes makes sense. You do end up carrying a lot of rubbish around in this game. Okay, let's carry on with the absolute monstrosity of a um, of a bus belt over here. <laughs> We're just trying to get the whole thing round these bloody um, uh, cliff faces. And then at some point, and then at some point in the future, we can rip it all out and blow up the cliffs and be very happy with it. Actually, there's another set, there's another cliff in the way, not very, not very far down, much further down. So let's um, instead let's get rid of all of that. <laughs> Start again, <laughs> and we'll move them all up a bit further while we've got while, while we've got the opportunity here. There's nothing wrong with having the old bit of a sort of a bend and a confusion in, in your uh, bus, is there? There we go. Now we can run them over across the top of that bus, uh, the, that top of that cliff face, and then later on, well, we're going to hit the water eventually. And when we do, we'll just have to turn north along here somewhere and uh, keep and keep the bus head and uh, keep and, and the bus can go up here into all, into all this space. That shouldn't be too hard. Now, I had some issues with the uh, recording. Apparently, it stopped just after I um, did, just after I built this part of the bus. So uh, after that, after that finished, I didn't do very much more to be honest. I just built up this. Uh, little factory here for making all the all the things I need for trains. So at the top here we've got the railway lines as you can see, got 320 there, so that's going to let me get up to the uh, to the uh, the oil I discovered up above. And we've also got wagons and locomotives being built off here as well. So th that's going that's going fine. We've got um I don't know why there's only one in there. Maybe it's let's have a look. I'm sure there should be more than one. Oh, it's because the engines are being built. There we go. So eventually we'll get more some more locomotives in there and I can put in some more trains. But for now, that's everything I did in this episode. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.